Hey folks, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. If you haven't been here before, thanks for stopping by. Maybe this is a little something that'll interest you. Uh, what I have here today is a two-stroke mini generator. Yeah, two-stroke. This one here um, is a Melga, Melga air-cooled two-stroke. It's 50 to one, so you have to mix the oil with the gas. Uh, my wife's aunt gave it to me when I was over there getting her lawn tractor going and asked me if I could get it going. Apparently it hasn't run in a, a number of years. She's not quite sure how many years that is, but so there's a few things that we can do to check it out. I have pulled it over. I have verified that it does not start. Uh, so I guess a couple of things we can do. There's many ways to go about diagnosing this. I'll go through the quickest way that I know, uh, just to make sure we have spark and compression, stuff like that. And uh, let's get started. <laughs> So we're going to start off with a couple things that I think are important. Making sure the on off switch is in the on position. You can see choke works. I can see the choke lever working. We have fuel, the gas is on. Now it does smell kind of varnishy, old. And uh, I'm going to throw a few liters of fresh fuel in there. And we're going to see what we have. So first thing I want to do, something really simple. We're just going to check for spark, number one. So we'll pull the spark plug off. We got a loose spark plug right here. This little guy here is loose. That could be an issue. So number one, we're just going to pull the spark plug out here. And also make sure that we have the correct spark plug in it. So it's not too, too bad. It's a little, little dirty. So I'll just give it a quick little brush here. Just gonna see if we have spark. We have excellent spark. Next, I'm just going to test for compression. I'm just going to stick my finger in a hole here. We do have compression. Not a whole lot from my finger being in it, but I don't know what the compression ratio is on this. So we're just going to continue. Put the spark plug back in. And we're going to make sure that this little nub on the top is tight. No damage to our spark plug wire. That all looks good. Next thing I think we can do is check for fuel in the bowl. Well, you know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to try a little experiment. I'm just going to shoot some starting fluid down the carburetor and see what happens. I did crank on this thing for quite a while. Gave it a good, uh, good bit of cranks. So we can see here that we actually have the carburetors right here. This is the air intake right there. So we're gonna spray. I just have some non-chlorinated brake cleaner. Let's give it a couple shots. All right, so we know we have a running generator. That's good news. So I'm gonna assume we have a fuel problem. I'm gonna take the screw off the bottom of the bowl here. We're gonna see what we have inside, right down at the bottom here. Pull that screw off of there. Okay, so I dumped the fuel out of the bowl and I did verify that when I turned the little valve back to on that I do get fuel flow into the carburetor bowl. And what I pulled out of there was just pure water now you might be asking yourself why water so i'm guessing that they've been running ethanol fuel in this thing over the years and uh reports have it that ethanol absorbs actual humidity out of the air and 
that it does, I know. Uh, so what it does, it pulls the humidity out of the air. If you can leave a little glass of fresh fuel on your counter for, I don't know, a week or two, you'll see that it does change colors. It goes to like a yellowish and that's because it's pulling the moisture out of the air. So once all the fuel evaporated out of the tank, uh, all we were left with was the water or the moisture that it pulled out of the air and that filled the bowl. So now I got fresh fuel in the bowl. I know that for a fact. Um, the plug at the bottom was quite dirty. And uh, you know what, I'm gonna, oh, let me show you the plug. All right, so here's our plug, as you can see right there. And down at the bottom, right here, you can see that it's pretty gunky. Now, it being a two-stroke, when that fuel does evaporate uh, out of the bowl or leaves the water behind, you do get whatever oil was left inside of the fuel stays at the bottom of the carburetor. So if this hasn't run in a number of years, I am going to surmise that that carburetor is probably full of gunk. Uh, I'm not even going to mess around with it any further. I'm going to pull the carb right off. I know it runs when I spray uh, starter fluid down the carb. So we're just going to go straight to the carburetor, pull it off. I'm not even going to mess around and we're going to take a look at the carb. So we can see we have the carburetor right here. And this cover here is going to have to come off to gain access to it. I'm not quite sure how to get that off of there. You know, well, first we'll start by getting the right socket. So these two bolts here are probably holding the carb to the actual body. So we're going to try and be careful pulling that apart. I don't want to tear any gaskets or bend any levers. We'll pull these out. And here's our carburetor. So all we have is one little linkage on there. With a little spring, and that would be the governor, I'm guessing. So we'll disconnect the spring and the lever, like so. And we only have one clamp right here for the fuel line. I'm gonna pinch that off, like so. And oh, that fuel line is rock hard. Oh boy, we could have a fuel line issue all right there we go the carburetor's off and this bowl because i have that bottom screw out making sure oh there's some gunk in there for sure so our float is still floating this looks like a replacement gasket maybe at one time not quite sure. So there's our carburetor, there's our inlet. We have our choke lever here. And this of course is the throttle. The throttle. Sorry, the throttle's here. And the choke lever's right here. Oh, here we go. There's the choke there. You can see the operation of the choke. So we have our float. So we do have some garbage in there. there let me show you the bottom of the bowl here. So at the bottom of the bowl, there is some, some crap in there, as you can see. So we're going to clean all this up and uh, see what we can do. All right, I'm going to start by removing the float. So to remove the float, there's a pin right here. I'm just going to slide that pin out like so. Now the float and the needle are going to come out in an assembly. Like so. And that needle just fell off. I do not see 
most of these needles and seats have little springs this one i do not see it just has a little tension the float just has this little tiny lever on it there but i don't see a spring or a retainer for this <clears throat> for this guy here which i find strange okay that's not coming off so i'll take this out with a screw driver It's actually surprisingly clean from what I see right now. So we'll slide the float off. And then here we have, it's actually clean. I can see right through it as well. Looking good so far. Try to remove our seal here. I think that seal's good in place. So we have another jet of some type on the top here. And then this screw here, this is probably the idle, idle screw. go so I just ran some brake cleaner through all the little orifices I could everything looks pretty nice again this is not a rebuild this is just a quick clean of the carburetor just to see if I can get it running and this gasket is still in one piece we have no fluid in our float so our float is sinking and coming up like it's supposed to but we're going to be cleaning this out right now all right, I've blown it out with some compressed air and then we're just going to put it back together. So we start by putting the needle into the seat and you don't want to damage the tip of it. So you're not going to put any pressure on it. So I'm just going to shake it until it sits in there like that. And then we're just going to make sure there's free movement like so, because if it's sticking, then that's no good. So we'll get that back in there. And then our float goes next. And then we're going to put our pin back in. I'm going to flip it upside down. And we're just going to check for proper operation. And that's working great. All right, we're going to stick this back in there and see what happens. Before I do that, I'm going to pull this screw out here. I'm just going to note how many turns are in it. That's one, two, well, that's one and a half. I guess only a half turn, so that's one and a half. That's two full turns. That's three, four. Okay, so we're just going to make sure that this pin here is nice and clean as well. I'm just going to blow some compressed air in there because I forgot about this one, guys. Sorry. And when you go all the way in, we don't tighten. You just snug it up so that the needle is just seated because you don't want to damage the needle. There's some spring pressure there. So, so it's seated there. We're going to go out one and a half turns. It's always a good place to start. Our gasket is still on there. It's in good shape. So we'll reconnect our spring and our lever. And we're going to reconnect our fuel line. And 
the mosquitoes are bad. I'm going to make sure this lines back up. Our gaskets are in place. And I am going to leave this cover off for the time being. I'm just going to run these bolts in like this for now. Then if it all works out, we'll put it back together properly. So choke is operational. Throttle is operational. So next we're going to open up the fuel valve, see if we have any leaks. That should be bringing fuel in there. Now we have a little fuel drain screw on the bottom of the carburetor. So I'm just going to crack that open a little bit just to see what comes out. And we have fuel. That's a good start. All right. So we have fuel. The carburetor has been cleaned out, blown out a little bit. There's about three, four fresh liters of fuel in here. So there's about $80 of fuel. So let's give it a couple cranks and see what happens. Okay. So we're going to turn on our choke. And everything else is on, the switch is on. Okay, so it's only running when it's choked. So we're going to be playing with that air mixture fuel screw that I just took off, the last one. Um, we're going to be slowly turning that. So I'm trying to think now, if it's running rich, if it's only running on choke, that means it needs more fuel, less air, more fuel. So I'm going to back the screw out. Probably, let's start with a quarter turn. Okay, I went a half turn. Let's try that. Choke back on. Turn the switch back on, dum dum. All right, still a little lean, I think. Let's try that again. So that pulsating of the uh, of the throttle that you see going in and out, uh, what that is is actually that's crankcase vacuum, and as the vacuum decreases, there's a spring on that lever that actually pulls. Well, sorry, the vacuum decreases, and then that lever will open because it's spring loaded, and then when when it opens, it's actually pulling the throttle open wider to allow more fuel, uh, so that when it's under load, it doesn't stall. So it's kind of a, they call it a governor anyway. Uh, I'm probably not the guy to explain it to you, but that's my, expl my explanation. Um, so I can't seem to get it to stop surging by playing with the idle air mixture. Um, I know it's getting fuel now. It, it started first pull, which was kind of shocking, especially for this channel. So I'm just going to keep playing with the fuel mixture a little bit and uh, we'll see what I can come up with. All right, I've got it adjusted as best I can. It now idles fine when it's just like one notch, uh, just one notch on the choke. That air mixture screw, I have that thing all the way in and then out uh, like a quarter turn for some reason. Not quite sure what's going on there, but I'm just gonna get this cover back on and then we'll see what happens. So there you go, let's call that a generator revival. 
Will it start after four or five years? Hey, damn right it'll start. You just got to put some clean fuel in it, clean up the carburetor a little bit. Zero parts, none whatsoever. Uh, apparently the uh, small, re small engine repair shops won't even look at them because they're a throwaway uh, is how they describe them. And uh, as you can see, not a throwaway, just a few bolts and taking your time. I had some brake cleaner, I had some engine shampoo, took all the little tiny orifices out, blew them out with some compressed air, soaked them down, put it back together. Honestly, no adjustments other than that air mixture screw. And uh, like I said, I, had, I got that thing turned in all the way till it's almost seated, then it's just back to like a quarter turn and it seems to run fine. I'm gonna run it right now for probably uh, 15, 20 minutes, see if I can get some of that, whatever was in the bottom of that tank. I did not clean the tank. The tank should have been cleaned out with Varsol or fuel, clean fuel, dumped, taken off the machine, cleaned out. Uh, but it is running now, and uh, I think uh, her aunt will be pretty happy. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you learned a little bit here with that little tiny carburetor, a little something. Again, no parts, running, put back together, time in diagnosing and repair, an hour max. And like I said, $85 in fuel. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit that little like button. It doesn't cost you a penny, helps me out a great deal. So we'll see you guys next time.